Okay, avoid this, boom, check. Avoid this, boom, check. Avoid this, boom, check. Okay, awesome. Cannot wait for that vision to eventually become a reality. This is the things that you need to avoid, so therefore these things can be revealed, so therefore you can be a better blessing to your family, you can be a better blessing to the people that you love and care about, you can be a better blessing to your church, your local community, your local city and state, you can be a better blessing to your country. That's what God wants in your life, which I think right now, America needs a huge dose of, Lord forbid, somebody talks about God and money and success and entrepreneurship these days. What's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy, Matt Zapala here. Haley and T from Dallas, Texas. And in this episode, we're gonna be talking about how to create a vision for your life according to King Solomon. Yes, from the Bible, believe it or not. And uh, if you haven't done so already, and if you watch a couple of our videos and you haven't liked any of our videos, please consider hitting like and also subscribing to our YouTube channel, a channel dedicated to help you think like a millionaire, strategize like a millionaire, so therefore you can become a first generation cash flow millionaire. And yes, by the way, you can also purchase right here at sevenfiguresquad.com your own seven figure merchandise. We got hats, we got shirts, we got polos, we got backpacks. Check it out, sevenfiguresquad.com. Okay, let's get into it. For those of you who don't know, the wisest and richest king who ever lived was a king named King Solomon who wrote the book of the Bibles, Proverbs, Song of Solomon, and Ecclesiastes, and a couple Psalms in there too as well. And one of the things that I look at his sayings is because I didn't realize that when I was reading this, I didn't realize there's so many uncovered gems about wealth, money, prosperity, happiness, handling and the stewardship of finances in the Bible. And so if you're out there looking to pursue and build your career, your business, your savings, your investments, there's so many wise sayings in Proverbs and short mean, what I call the original mean tweets about how to really discipline yourself when it comes to the subject of personal finance and entrepreneurship and leadership in your life. I will also say this, don't depend on me to read the Bible for you. I'm not a pastor. Uh, I'm not a, a master's of divinity or, or religious studies. I'm just a lay person in the church, an entrepreneur in the church that's looking to analyze what God wants in my life through the lens of the Bible. And the Bible of reference I'm using is John Maxwell's Leadership Bible because he also has an interesting way of also looking at the words of Scripture through the lens of a leader, through the lens of somebody that's a visionary, and making sure that you lead your life in a way that God intended for you. So please, after we get done through this series, I encourage you to also look at the Proverbs and the things that we're looking at for yourself and also take in for yourself. Don't depend on me, don't depend on any pastor, don't depend on any other man or woman to read the Bible for you. This is something you should look at to be inspired to see what God wants to reveal in your life. In Proverbs chapter 29, I'm going to borrow a proverb from a later chapter, and he talks about vision there too as well, and he really unpacks what vision is in Proverbs chapter 23. But in Proverbs chapter 29, he says this, without vision, the people perish. Big reason why a lot of people don't get what they want in life because they forget what it is that they're pursuing. They forget what the vision they had when maybe they were younger and maybe when they were in school or maybe when they first started their career or business because they got distracted through life. So let's take a look at what vision means in having a preferred future. Number one, thoughts determine your character. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 7, it reads like this. For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, he says to you, but his heart is not with you. So in other words, before it comes out your mouth, you're already thinking things. And we've always said that before you do anything, before you consider a result, think about how you think things. Because how you think things is how you say things. And those sayings lead to your actions, your behaviors, and your results. Number two, thoughts may break out into words. So whatever you're thinking about may blurt out in an argument, may blurt out on stage, may blurt out in a boardroom, may blurt out in your dealings with other people. Proverbs chapter 23, verse eight, it reads like this. The morsel you have eaten, you will vomit up and waste your pleasant words. So whatever it is that your brain has been consuming, it's just not that your stomach that consumes things. It's how you're processing information. However you think things, you end up saying things. How many times have you kept your own opinion to yourself until you got into an argument? Well, that opinion comes out by what you were thinking about five minutes ago, a month ago, and conflict just makes those words come out. And guess what? You have to deal with for the rest of your life, especially if you have to deal with people. You're gonna have to deal with conflict. So if you're dealing with conflict, you gotta make sure you process information, you process those relationships, you process what you go on a day-to-day -day basis with how you think things. And that's why when I look at the Bible, oftentimes it's like, oh, it's just religion being shoved down your throat. No, this is my anchor. 
And something you should ought to consider is what is the anchor that you have in your life based on morals, values, and principles? What is the anchor that causes you to think about things and how to process things? Number three, don't waste your thoughts on others who don't really care about your vision. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 9, it reads like this. Do not speak in the hearing of a fool, for he will despise the wisdom of your words. You know, oftentimes we waste time trying to have a conversation and argue or try to convince somebody who doesn't want to go where you want to go, who doesn't want to accomplish what you think they should be accomplishing in your life. That's why I've gone about life. Instead of telling people things, I've gone about life asking people things. Because if I ask them things and they answer that will tip me off to how they potentially want to lead their life. If they're closed off, I shut down. But if they answer my question with other areas of insight, then there I can start sharing with them. Same thing too I do with my mentors. If my mentors, if I know they're asking me a question versus telling me things, that's why sometimes people don't want to listen to their parents because parents are constantly telling their kids things. They're telling kids things. Listen, I've got five kids total, three older ones and two younger ones. I've gone about switching the way I go about talking to my older kids by asking them questions. And if, hey, hey, listen, as much as I love them and want to see them protected and have a great future, if I ask them questions and yet they don't respond in a way, I got to back off because they may not want to receive me yet. Here's how I help them, though. I talk to the people that influence them because I don't want to think that I'm the only person in their life that influence. I want to talk to people that they influence by, the aunt, an uncle, a family member, a friend, an older, wiser person in their life, a coach, a teacher, a boss, I have a conversation with them and have them start asking questions, which is on the same page as myself. Something you have to consider. Next one is the first person you lead is you. You got to master your own mind. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 12, it reads like this. Apply your heart to instruction and your ears to words of knowledge. So again, the first person you have to master is you. The first thoughts and brain you got to control is your own before you try to control the brains and thoughts of other people. Next one, don't let your mind drift from God's truth. Don't let it drift from God. By the way, there's so many distractions and so, different, so many different things pulling for your attention and your opinion about life and about going about doing things. Don't drift, it says here, King Solomon says, don't drift, have it drift away from God's truth, which is an anchor. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 17, it reads like this. Do not let your heart envy sinners, but be zealous for the fear of the Lord all day. Next one, stay confident in your vision, your vision, what God has intended to you. There's a reason why God gave you a dream. It wasn't for you to explain it to other people to get their approval. This is not for other people to understand. That's why God gave you a vision. God gave you a dream. Let's read it. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 18. It reads like this. For surely there is a hereafter and your hope will not be cut off. See, there is an end game and another beginning once you read that part of the end game. Because once you reach the top of your current level, guess what? You're at the bottom of the next level. There is going to be a hereafter. And do not cut off your hope. Last but not least on this area here is discipline your thoughts. Discipline your thoughts. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 19. It reads like this. Hear my son and be wise and guide your heart in the way. And so many other people will be trying to tug at your heart, your thoughts, your behaviors. So many people try to influence you. But if it's grounded on God's truth, based on values, principles, and morals, guess what, you can go through life, and guess what, you'll go through life, a lot of people probably will not be liking you. Why? Because you stay grounded, and people want to pull you in their direction. Instead of having constructive conversations with each other, that becomes a shouting match. But you stay on God's truth, and God will bless you immensely. All right, and this next area here is what to avoid, because there's two types of visions. One's a short-term vision, there's a long-term vision. As it pertains to your investments, your savings, your career goals, your business goals, there's short-term thinking, and there's also long-term thinking. And so guess what God wants you to think about? Short-term or long-term? Well, let's see here. It'll reveal it in his truth. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 20, 21, it reads like this. Do not mix with wine bibbers or with gluttonous eaters of meat. For the drunkard and the glutton will come to poverty. And drowsiness will clothe a man with rags. So hanging out with party people or strategy people? Now, did it say here you can't have a good meal? Did it say here you can't have wine? Did it say here you can't have dessert? Did it say here you can't have a, a drink? Of course it didn't say that. And by the way, there's a lot of very, very, very conservative believers that will challenge me on this one. But listen, it didn't say do not mix with wine bibbers. You can have a drink. 
You can have a good meal. You can have a steak. You can have a good drink. But when it comes to being drunkard and being gluttonous, and there's an overabundance of the things that you're consuming to the point where it gets you to think off your game, off your purpose, off your vision, that's where the sin comes in. And that's where the devil likes to say, all right, I got my entry point. Let me mess with this person. So God wants you to think long-term, not just short-term, about the people that you're hanging with and having meals with. Next one, the older you get, the smarter your parents are. What? Proverbs chapter 23, verse 22, verse 23, it reads like this. Listen to your father who begot you, and you do not despise your mother when she is old. Buy the truth and do not sell it. Also wisdom and instruction and understanding. In other words, buy the truth. Also wisdom and instruction and understanding and don't sell it. And here's the thing. I know some of you may have been raised with a parent that really deeply, immensely hurt you. So it may not be telling you what you need to be doing, but potentially what you need to avoid when you become an adult, when you become a parent, when you become a leader in business, when you become a person that's active in their community and building up the kingdom. So the older you get, the better perspective that you'll have in your life, the maturation process. And even King Solomon says here, listen to your father, listen to your mother. Even though they didn't lead you the right way, even though they hurt you in a very deep way, you will learn not necessarily what to do, but also what to avoid. Because the older you get, the smarter your parents become. Next one, don't get wrapped up with the wrong woman. Ladies, don't get wrapped up with the wrong man. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 26 to 28 reads like this. My son, give me your heart and let your eyes observe my ways. For a harlot is a deep pit. And by the way, let's define what a harlot is. And from the Oxford Dictionary, a harlot is a prostitute. So for a harlot is a deep pit, and a seductress is a narrow well. She also lies in wait as for a victim and increases the unfaithful amongst men. So here's the bottom line too as well. A lot of us in today's society is facing a deep challenge with values, morals, and principles as it relates to sex, relationships. It's so divided. People say, you know what? I want to have one woman, one one husband in my life. And there's another camp that says, I want a lot of women or a lot of men in my life. Well, King Solomon, who had access in his life, learning from his mistakes, he had access to six, 700 wives, 300, 400 concubines, thousands of kids. So Matt, you quote me from the scripture of a Bible that had a lot of that going on. Well, he's also saying here, my son, give me your heart, because he got older, he got wiser. And his instruction to his son says, hey son, give me your heart, let your eyes observe my ways. For a harlot is a deep pit, because now he's recognizing it's probably not the best way to go about life. There's a lot of anger, there's a lot of frustration, there's a lot of anxiety as it relates to having a lot of relationships going on and having a lot of kids going on all at the same time. Which leads me to my last point in Proverbs chapter 23. 23 is a little different than a lot of different Proverbs chapters because instead of just one-liners or two-liners, these are actually sayings of the wise. These are actually blurbs that he's saying out there that are actually longer instruction than one or two sentences as previously mentioned in other Proverbs. And he's talking about here a message to drinkers and for all the party people that's out there. That's why I realized in my life, having a party life, having a life that's out there, probably isn't where I need to be to extend my life and to expand my business, to have a fruitful and healthy relationship with my wife, my children. It's fun for a minute. Maybe there's a phase in your life that you go out there, but it never leads to much. So when you're looking at Proverbs chapter 23, there's a long blurb here. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 29 through 35, it reads like this. Who has woe? Who has sorrow? Who has contentions? Who has complaints? Who has wounds without cause? Who has redness of eyes? Those who linger long at the wine. Those who gurn search of mixed wine. Do not look on the wine when it is red, when it sparkles in a cup, when it swirls around smoothly. At the last, it bites like a serpent and stings like a viper. Your eyes will see strange things and your heart will utter perverse things. Yes, you'll be like one who lies down in the midst of the sea or like the one who lies at the top of the mast saying, they have struck me, but I was not hurt. They have beaten me, but I did not feel it. When shall I awake that I may seek another drink? Doesn't this sound like madness? Does this sound like a drunk night that you had? You woke up, oh my gosh, I got a freaking hangover, I got a headache. That's what King Solomon is saying. Listen, man, it might be great to party and have 
a couple of drinks here and there, but an overabundance of that, too much of that, leads you to a lot of bad decision and ultimately destroys the vision that God has in your life. So as I wrap up, God has a deep plan for you. My belief, my belief system, maybe this is something you ought to consider. But God doesn't make any mistakes. God has created in you a very special purpose. The purpose, I don't know. That's between you and God. But it cannot be manifested, it cannot be exposed unless you consider other things and how you lead your life would cause that vision to either be cut short or actually experienced once you go through these checklists in your life. That's really what I look at this is. Checklist, okay, avoid this, boom, check. Avoid this, boom, check. Avoid this, boom, check. Okay, awesome. Cannot wait for vision to come into my life, for that vision to eventually become a reality. That, that vision gets bigger and larger and more expansive as you grow, as what you see God has intended for your life. This is the things that you need to avoid, so therefore these things can be revealed, so therefore you can be a better blessing to your family, you can be a better blessing to the people that you love and care about, you can be a better blessing to your church, your local community, your local city and state, you can be a better blessing to your country. That's what God wants in your life, which I think right now, America needs a huge dose of, and uh, Lord forbid, somebody talks about God and money and success and entrepreneurship these days, and maybe today we just need somebody in a community, in a movement of people to say, you know what, let's stand up for righteousness, let's stand up for what God has intended for our lives, our families, our country. We'll know what your thoughts are about that. Please put it in the comment section below. That being said, before I let you go, please check out the other problems we've broken down in the previous weeks. And if you're watching this video, if you got some value from it, consider hitting like. If you watch a couple of other videos and you've done so already, please consider hitting subscribe and hit notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. From Dallas, Texas, I'm your money smart guy. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today.